as an important governance principle. And of course, uh, our guest this morning is Mr. Young David Dauda, ACIS. He's uh, an international project manager and chartered accountant. He's company secretary at Aluku and Uyibodi, a law firm. Good morning, Mr. Young David Dauda. Good morning. All right, thank you for joining us on the program this morning. You're welcome. All right, so also with me in the studio is Mr. Kayode Ketefe, FCIS. He's head of research, Ixan. Good morning, Mr. Ketefe. Good morning, Fumi. Good morning to you, our guest, Mr. Young David Dauda, ACIS, and to all our listeners. Good morning. All right. Good, good morning, sir. All right, let's uh, take this message and we'll be right back. The world is constantly evolving into a knowledge-based economy where skills and competencies constitute the lifeblood of public and corporate governance. You therefore need to empower yourself to fit into this new world by gaining basic knowledge and improving your skill set in the governance-focused disciplines. That is why every aspiring as well as practicing professional in governance field needs Ixan. Ixan? What is Ixan? Ixan is a leading statutorily established professional body dedicated to enhancing the status and practice of corporate governance and public administration. Ixan members are trained as chartered secretaries and administrators. Who are chartered secretaries and administrators? Chartered secretaries are high-ranking governance professionals with a broad base of skills, unique amongst other professions. They are trained in law, finance, accounting, administration, strategy development and corporate governance. In today's world, chartered secretaries and administrators discharge a wide range of duties and responsibilities, including functioning as chairman of companies, executive directors, non-executive directors, company secretaries, risk managers, compliance managers, board evaluators, and corporate governance evaluators. That is interesting. How then do I become a chartered secretary and administrator? Good. Go to the institute's website, www.exan.org. You can also visit the National Secretariat of Ixan at Plot 6, Elephant Cement Way, Alausa Ikeja, Lagos, to get full information on how to become members. Ixan, the hub of governance professionals. All right, Ixan, definitely the hub of governance professionals. Uh, we said earlier that we're looking at disclosure and transparency as an important governance principle. All right, uh, Mr. Dauda, let's uh, look at the terms uh, transparency and disclosure. Uh, what does it mean? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Okay, seems uh, there's a network issue. Right there, let me try to re-establish contact uh, with uh, Mr. Dauda at this uh, particular point in time. It's still corporate governance platform brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan. And uh, of course, let me also remind you that Ixan okay that ixan is a leading recognized professional body in nigeria that's dedicated to enhancing status and practice of corporate governance and public administration all right mr dauda are you there can you hear me yes i'm here okay great now the question i asked uh what is transparency and disclosure okay can you hear me clearly i can hear you clearly yes uh, transparency is an ethic that span, that has span science as an ethic that span science, engineering, business and humanity is operating in such a way that it is easy for others to see what actions that are performed and how they are performed. Transparency implies openness, communication and accountability. Why disclosure, on the other hand, is the action is is the act 
of making new or secret information known. A fact, especially a secret that is made known. Thank you. All right. Uh, what is the relevance of transparency and disclosure in the context of corporate governance? Hello, I didn't hear that. The relevance of transparency and disclosure in the context of corporate governance. Okay. Uh, if I get you clearly, you say what is the relevance of transparency and disclosure in the context of corporate governance, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Transparency, the relevance of transparency and disclosure in the context of corporate governance cannot be overemphasized. Disclosure is crucial in enhancing transparency, accountability, and stakeholders' engagement. Increased transparency in the operations and management of a corporate entity makes it easier for investors to make informed decisions. Increased transparency avoid, makes it easier to avoid financial, makes it easier to avoid financial and economic crisis. It eliminates insider dealing and with the dressing of financial statements, yet investors to make informed decisions. Thank you. All right. Now, can you give us instances uh, of situations desiring disclosure and transparent dealings in governance? Okay. If you are talking about the instances or situations that require disclosure and transparency, there are many. You can look at conflict of interest situations where directors engage in a competing business. You can see multiple directorship when directors are in, involved in multiple directorship. This one also requires disclosure that, okay, I'm a director in company A, I'm also a director in company B. It requires disclosure so that the company, know, the company, your current company will know the other company where you are directing, whether, they are also, whether they are, there is a conflict, conflict of interest or competing business. Related party transactions, you have to disclose. Okay, uh, my the parent company is having transaction with uh, the subsidiary. Business sustainability policies, the company ELG, Environment, Social and uh, Governance Initiatives, also require disclosure. Thank you. All right. Now, I want you to tell us uh, the difference between financial and non-financial disclosure. Okay. In, when people say financial and non-financial in a business entity, I always have to tell people that when you are talking about a business entity, everything that a business entity does has a financial impact. There must be finance involved. Uh, uh, let's say, for example, for lawyers' fee, fighting for sexual harassment, lawsuits, we affect the bottom line of the company. So, but there is a thin line between financial and non financial disclosure. Financial disclosure are the disclosure of those business activities that have financial impact directly on the bottom line of the company, such as sales revenue, advertisement costs employee compensation and the value of an asset. Why non-financial disclosure on the other hand, there are the disclosure of those business activities that do not directly affect the bottom line of the company. We talk about the environmental impact, human resource issues, uh, improved operations, and uh, relationship with client and supplier, ESG initiative of the company. All those are non financial disclosure. Thank you. All right. Now, before I let you go, I want to, to talk about uh, the harms in not fulfilling the disclosure requirements and ideals. Okay. By the harms, I mean you are saying what are the consequences mm -hmm. of non disclosure? Yes. No, okay, there are so many uh, consequences that affect non-disclosure. When uh, 
That depends. The consequences of non-disclosure depends on the materiality of the item or the situation involved. When you talk about non-disclosure, non-disclosure can lead to a lawsuit against a corporate entity. It can lead to lack of trust or by the stakeholders or the public. It can lead to financial and economic crisis, insider trading, related party transactions that are not at arm's length. Okay, but there is a key one that we also want you to take from what I have said. Okay. The consequences is the lack of trust. Lack of trust. That is the key one there. Because what makes company A product and services to be costlier, more expensive than that of uh, company B, is because of, not because of company A product and services are better than, in most cases, better than that of company B, but because of the confidence the trust that company A has built over the years. Company A is no longer just selling the same product and services, it's selling a brand name. So one of the greatest consequences on harm that non-disclosure can lead to is lack of trust from the company, lack of trust from the stakeholder, from the general public, and from the investors. Once the public loses a trust in a company, once the investor loses trust in the company, once the stakeholder loses trust in the company, the company is already headed to winding up. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Young David Dauda, ACIS, International Project Manager and Chief Accountant, Company Secretary at Aluko and Uyibodi, which is a law firm. Thank you for joining us on Corporate Governance Platform this morning. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Ketefe, uh, I understand we have some announcements. Thank you very much for me. The announcement we have for our listeners this morning is on the Exxon 2023 Governance Practitioners Day, which is coming up tomorrow. This announcement is meant for all Exxon members, all governance professionals, as well as interested members of the public. Now, have you been wondering how to overcome all the hiccups and technical challenges that are associated with electronic filings of documents with the regulators like Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, FRCN, Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Nigeria Regulations and Securities and Exchange Commission. Now the opportunity has come to learn some useful tips on how to successfully navigate through all these challenges and this is, uh, this is coming directly from the regulators themselves. This will happen at 2023 Exxon Governance Practitioners Day, which is holding tomorrow, Thursday, August 3rd, 2023. This event will be held by hybrid method and thus allowing the those who cannot attend physically to participate. The venue for physical participation is BWC Hotel, Victoria Island, Lagos. The theme of this program is Corporate Governance and Regulatory Compliance in an Emerging Era of Electronic Filings. The theme, once, once again, is Corporate Governance and Regulatory Compliance in an Emerging Era of Electronic Filings. The four leading regulators that are scheduled to send representatives to provide knowledge and insight at this event tomorrow are Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, as I've said, Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, FRC, and NGS Regulation Limited, NGS RESCO. The participation fee is 25,000 Naira. There is, however, a discount of 20% for students of the Institute and for students of the Institute only. You can now register. Please hurry up to register for this important program. The link to register for participation is on the Institute's website and all our social media platforms. So for more information on Exxon 2023 Governance Practitioners Day that is coming up tomorrow at 10 a.m., please call Coyote on 080-3214-7720. For more information on Exxon 2023 Governance Practitioners Day coming up tomorrow at 10 a.m. prompt, please call Coyote on 080-3214-7720. Thank you and have a pleasant day.
All right, thank you so much, Mr. Kadi Ketefe, FCIS Head of Research, Ixan. And that's how we'll wrap it up this morning on Corporate Governance Platform, brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan. We'll return again next week, Wednesday, 10, 15 a.m. on a fresh edition of the program. I am Fumi Omoburiu. Enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>